like to thank God for that awesome time of worship by Pastor Wally. I pray that God will continue to enrich our hearts with his worship and not just his melody, but the richness of the spirit of worship in our hearts in Jesus' name. I'd also like to thank God for those who are joining us on the social media and digital platforms. I pray that the blessings of God will remain with you where you are in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Today I have a message to share with us that is titled, The Man of Impact. Amen. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you so much for another opportunity this morning to come before you and to be drenched in the presence of your wonderful name, O God. Thank you for the opportunity to gather with saints and to raise up, Father God, our worship into your presence and into your throne room. We ask that you receive our worship. As we listen out to you today to hear you speak, Father God, speak and touch our hearts. We bless and we honor you. Thank you for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you because in this hope, there is life. And that life is everlasting. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's thank God for David who has come to be with us this morning. Thank you, David. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Amen. Let me just read a few scriptures to us in Psalm 119. If you have been joining us, to pray during this time of fasting. We wake up to pray at 5 a.m. every day. And also we take time to post the prayer points on the platforms so that you can, those who didn't wake up, um, those who don't have early starts, they can still join to pray later on in the day. So we have the prayer points listed out there. And um, we've been reading quite a lot from this psalm. It's the longest psalm in the Bible and very powerful psalms, a collection of what God um, revealed to David. And I'm going to read a few of the verses from verse 1. Let me just read. It says, Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search of him with their hearts. Verse 3 says, They do not compromise with evil, and they walk only in his path. Verse 13 says, Verse 13, it says, I have recited aloud all the regulations of, uh, all the regulations you have given us. And then verse 113, Scroll down to 113. It says, I hate those who divided, I hate those with divided loyalties, but I love your instructions. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, these are a few verses of this long psalm. I wonder when we, when we meet David in heaven, we'll ask him, what, did you, what was going through your mind to have written such a long chapter of Psalm in just one compilation? I mean, it could have divided into two, but I'm sure it, it has a reason. Now, this Psalm, of course, tells us where God wants us to be with him. Amen? The man of impact, as we're looking at this morning, is one who recognizes the agenda of God for his life. The agenda of God for his family, for his community, for his nation, and for the times that we are living in now. He doesn't just recognize it, but he aligns himself ready to obey them. That is the man of impact. There's a lot more people who recognize this agenda of God, God's plan. The problem is only a few people follow them. 
There's one thing to recognize what God wants you to do. It is another kettle of fish entirely to follow and live by it. There are people who recognize the purpose and plans of God just because they want to criticize it. Just because they want to mock it or want, just because they want to break it and not obey it. You know, the Bible gave us a reference of that wicked and lazy servant who had one talent given to him. He recognized the plan of God. He knew the plan of God. But the Bible said he deliberately did not follow it. Listen to what he said, he, the way he described God. I wonder what was going on in his mind. He said, then the servant, I mean the servant, the wicked and lazy servant, said, then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you did not plant and gathering crops you did not cultivate. How dare him say that about God? How dare him say that God did not plant and yet want to give? Because God gave him a plan, I mean a talent. Isn't it? The same way he gave to other ones. So what he was saying was entirely wrong. So God was in the right position to ask him to be profitable. Because he gave him a seed. He gave him a talent. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ is an agent of transformation in the hand of God. And the degree of our alignment with him and our yieldedness to him will determine the level of our representation of him. The level to which we are yielded to God will determine how we are going to, how far we can go to represent him. Last year, some point in time last year, I did a study about the, the attributes of ambassadors. If you remember? Any day and at any point in time that an ambassador wakes up and began to disregard and disobey the agenda, the principle and the instructions of the sent country or the home country, then they are recalled. I mean, they don't spend any more day. One, that very day, they are recalled home. Because that means they have engaged, they have decided to step out of their boundary. The ability to continue to represent that nation depends on you aligning daily with what is happening in the home country. And that means for us as ambassadors of the God's kingdom, we must align ditto, ditto, to what is happening in heaven because we are representatives and ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. God is calling this church into obedience as a key element absent in the fight against this virus. I believe very strongly that God is asking the church to step into the center of all that is going on. If we look, the church has found themselves to have lost ideas, just like every other person. I mean, we have seen a lot of effort by the scientists, by the government, by the care providers, by our health professionals, Everybody is putting everything that they could think of on the table. However, my question is, what is the church putting on the table? What is it that the church is stepping up to say, this is my contribution? What is the church doing? Let's read from Second Chronicles, that scripture that all of us read, we quote and we believe in, I believe. It says in 2 Corinthians, I mean, so 2 Chronicles 7 14, say, Then, if my people who are called by my name 
will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Said, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. We are the people called in the name of the Lord. We are the people that God is referring to here. You see, if we will humble ourselves and call upon him, he said he will act on our behalf. The church must actively step in as a matter of urgency and cry for the restoration of the land. The God of mercy who we represent is giving us an insight of what is to be done, of what can be done, of what should be done to see the manifestation of the power of God. I'm here to challenge you as a church. This morning, I'm here to provoke you as a church. Not counting myself out of it, I'm here to provoke all of us. That is time for us to get together, rise up and fix our position so that we can see God move on our behalf. Let's just look at a reference in the Bible, there's a Bible account that I can make reference to this morning that tells us what happened when a deadly plague like this entered and hit the camp of the children of Israel a while back. In Numbers chapter 16, and I'm going to read this from the message translation. Numbers 16 from verse 46 to 48. At this point in time, a plague like this, a deadly plague like this, entered into the camp of the children of Israel. And verse 46 says, Moses said to Aaron, Moses was the commander-in-chief. He was, as it were, the prime minister. And he said to Aaron, Aaron was a priest, perhaps a health minister. He said to Aaron, take your censer and fill it with incense along with fire from the altar from where from the altar somebody say from the altar get get to the congregation as fast as you can make atonement for them anger is pouring out from god the plague has started Verse 47 says, Aaron grabbed the censer as directed by Moses and ran into the midst of the congregation. The plague had already begun. In another translation, he says, the plague has already started striking down the people. He said he put the burning incense into the censer and atone for the people. He stood there between the living and the dead and stopped the plague. God is calling upon the church to not stand watching. God is saying to the church, the time is now for us to step into the center of the game. The man of impact is a man with a functional altar. A altar, an altar that has a connection with God. An altar that is alive and that is living. There's no point being a Christian if you do not have an altar where you can commune with God, where you can communicate with God. When you have an altar, it is where you go and you talk to God and God talks back to you. In those days when things are going on like this, the king would send for the priest and say, go and ask your God. 
and let him tell us what we should do. And the priest will go to the altar and will lay there. The Bible says when they are going to the altar, they go making sure that they will return. Because the altar is a dangerous place to go. In fact, when they go, they tie a chain around their waist. Because if you go into the altar anyhow, you could be struck dead. And when you are struck dead, nobody has the opportunity or the, the, the effrontery to go in there and bring you out. They have to pull the person out like a dead log of wood. The altar is a place of communication with God. Don't be like a person with a mobile phone that has no pro so service provider. If you have a mobile phone, you can go into the shop today and buy the best mobile phone you can find there. You need a service provider. You need somebody to connect you, to give you connectivity. A mobile phone without connectivity to a service provider is, a, is just a box. A piece of metal without relevance. That is the same way with somebody who has an altar or who is a Christian that doesn't have an altar where they commune with God. In Exodus chapter 30 verse 1 to 10, it talks about the design of the altar. And if you take time to look at the materials that were used to form and prepare what the altar looks like, you will notice that it symbolizes everything that symbolizes purity. The acacia wood at the altar is a symbol of purity, a symbol of resurrection. A symbol of immortality. That's why we go to the altar. When we go to the altar, we go into the altar to take a cover and say, God, I, come, I ask of you to cover me and shield me. At the altar, there's a covering. The place of altar is a place of deep secret love with God. A place where God comes and engages in affectionate relationship with his people. Where he says to his people, I love you and I love you to spend everything I have on you. The altar is a place of friendship. The acacia wood signifies friendship. Signifies renewal. And I love this. It signifies fortitude. Fortitude is the ability to stand in the face of the greatest challenge that you may be going through. And that's why in this time, in all that we're going through, one of the prayers I pray for this church, for this house, for myself, for my family, for all those that are beloved to me, is God give us the fortitude to stand so that our faith does not give up. In my language, there's a saying that when a child sees something that will make him be afraid, they'll be afraid. In the last 48 hours, I've heard news that if you are not standing firmly, your faith could be shaken. But yet, I hear secondly that I know, that I know, that I know. That the God I serve is a living God. The acacia wood signify all those things. The second thing that you find at the altar is the golden ring. The golden ring or rings, the modern pillars and the poles. Overlaid with pure gold. All those things also signify purity, victory, preciousness, invaluableness, and also the priceless worth that we are in the hand of God. That's why all these things I've accounted to you, that's what makes the altar a place that you can go 
and run in for safety. That's why Jesus also make himself to account for the altar that we have in our relationship with God. This is the reason also that in case you are thinking about having the relationship with God, you must look at it that the expectation is that any man that will go to the altar and play the priesthood role between man and God must make sure they do it under the purity of the calling of God. Amen? You can't go to the altar anyhow. In those days when you walk into the altar anyhow, you drop dead. Jesus knew no sin and he became a mediator between man and God. Moses and Aaron served that purpose. Guess what? You and I are supposed to serve that purpose in this time. Because we are the priest, the people who are called in the name of God, who is supposed to stand in the gap for the people. Amen? Amen. Jesus knew no sin and no sin knew him. That is the reason why Moses instructed Aaron, the man who knew what to do and who also understood the gravity of the impact, if what is there to be done is done and the results that will come out of it. You know, the Bible recount how that plague started striking down the people of the land. But there was yet something to be done. And Moses did something. Moses instructed Aaron to act. We are here we are now. At that day, in that day, 414,700 people had already died. Yet Moses still gave an instruction. I was listening to the news earlier on today. And nearly 80,000 people have been struck dead in our country, the United Kingdom. Yet the church is still at peace. Today, we are at critical point of our existence. The virus is plucking down people irrespective of their class. In the society. So much has been done. Yet it seems a lot still has to be done. For us to have a direction. Our leaders in government are having sleepless nights. They are doing all they could. But then things are not in any way subsiding. Everywhere we turn, everywhere you turn, you could see fear, could see terror, could see the hopelessness as the situation defies solution. When we advance in one step forward, because there's now a vaccine, we take another step backwards because the virus is now mutating and then becoming deadlier than it was before. I want to say that it is not accidental that the church is open today. Never see it as an accidental thing that the church is now being categorized for us as an essential service. It is for us to now decide what are we going to do with that status. What should we do? Moses commanded Aaron. What should we do as we are gathered here? Today, I'm here to challenge and to provoke you. 
that we will pray and we will call on God. A few days ago, I woke up from my sleep and I woke up with a vision of myself standing here and then having my hand placed on this globe and asking you as a people to let us pray and call for this plague to stop. And this morning as we were praying at 5 a.m., I had already gone to bed around 1 a.m., prepared my message, and was thinking about coming to share. This wasn't entirely what I wanted to share. Totally different. But as, as we were led to pray this morning, and the, the minister who led us to pray, we prayed about obedience. And as he was leading us to pray, I heard clearly that it's now time to call upon me on the altar to stay the hand of this virus from plaguing you any further. And that's why you have this globe here. Now, when we bought this globe, we didn't buy it. Some of us bought it for decoration. Some of you have globes at home. This, this, this globe. Yeah, yeah. We have it for decoration. God is saying to you, from today, Ty, when you get home, bring your globe to the center of the house. We will be laying hands on this globe from today. Say, we call forth the hand of this virus to stay. In our lives, in our territory, in our domain, in our hospitals, in our nations, in the boundary of our land, in the name of Jesus. When a man of impact step in and say, I will do and obey the instructions of God. God says, I will hear me when you call me. Guess what? I will not just hear you. He says, I will answer you. If you believe we serve a God who answers prayer, today we're going to pray. And it's not for us to call upon God and throw ourselves on the floor. It is to ask God with a brokenness of heart and say, God, it is you alone that we depend on because we know if we call you, you can hear us. I don't know how many of us are at home there and you can listen to me on the digital medias. If you don't have a globe, it doesn't matter. We are going to pray a prayer of agreement together because what is happening is nothing to do with who you are. It has to do with what you can do as God gives you instructions. What we are doing here this morning has no boundary to United Kingdom. It touches the ends of the earth. It touches everywhere you can think about. I just ask of you, if you have a globe around you, some of you have it as key holders. If you don't have one, we can place one on the screen and just lay your hands towards it and say to God, God, we call upon you the God of heaven. We call upon you the same God who heard the prayer that Aaron prayed when he got into the midst of the congregation of the, the people. The Bible said he stood in between the dead and the living. What did he do? He stood in between the dead and the living to bring about a separation. Because as it was going, there was no more difference between the dead and the living. All those who are living are now susceptible to dying. But he got in between them and said there is a demarcation. The same way there was a demarcation in the Red Sea for the children of Israel to pass by on dry ground, Aaron decreed into place a separation between the living and the dead. And the Bible says the plague stopped. This morning I want you to pray and call upon this plague. Whatsoever name it is called, whatsoever strain that is imitating, let us care and say, God, we ask of you by the same anointing upon Jesus, the Son of God. We step in and we call for this virus to stay, to end, to come to an end, to cease, or to lose its power, to lose its influence in our lives. Father God, we decree, O oh God, 
upon this land, upon the United Kingdom, upon Scotland, upon Wales. We decree upon the United Kingdom, O oh God. We decree upon the Republic of Ireland that this virus will stop and the peace of God will come upon us. Bible says, if you will humble yourself, if you will humble yourself to Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, O oh Lord, this morning we turn from our wicked ways, O oh God. We ask that you will look down, said you will hear us from heaven. You will forgive our sins and you will restore the land. Father God, we ask of you today, restore this land. Restore the peace. Restore the health of this nation. Restore the health of our country. Restore, oh God, the economy of this nation. Restore, oh God, the tranquility of this nation. Let this storm of, of sickness, let this storm of affliction, let this storm of virus cease. The Bible says the name of the Lord has been lifted high above every name. That at the call of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Today we call upon the name of coronavirus to bow before God. To bow in the name of Jesus. To bow because we call upon the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask of you, hear us and grant our desire. Father God, do not allow for us to be, a oh God, a people that can do nothing. Father God, we ask of you, bring about peace, bring about healing, bring about deliverance, bring about safety. We call upon you. We run, O oh God, into you. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in. We run in into your name this morning. We run in, O oh God. We stand in the gap. We stand in between the living and the dead. Let the shield of God, let the covering of God come upon us. Father, we thank you. Oh, we bless your name, O oh God. We give you praise. Father, you are the God of mercy. The God who hears when we call. The God who can hear us even as we call right now. Father God, attend your ears, O oh God, to our call. Bible says when we call upon you, we will not call in vain. Father God, we know we are not calling in vain this morning. We are calling, oh God, and we know you can hear us. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name, oh God. We honor you. We praise you. We magnify you. You are king. You are Lord. You are immortal. Upon this altar, oh God, and all the altars out there, where it is that have been dedicated unto you, the God of heaven. Father God, as anyone, O oh God, called by your name, will come unto you and cry up unto you, O oh God, from their altars. Father God, hear and answer in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to pray one more prayer before we close. Let us stand in the gap and pray for all those who are presently have caught this virus. Either they are in hospitals or they are at home, wherever they are. Either they are on ventilation, they are whatever it is, let us pray for them. Let's stand in the gap and say, Father God, we stand for these ones to be delivered. Let this death, let this death cease, O oh God. We stand, O oh God, upon this altar and we decree, we send forth the healing power of God. 
We ask because you are the healer, Jehovah Rapha. We ask, oh God, into the hospitals, into the homes, oh God, on the streets, oh God, we pray. Let the affliction on the people dry up in the name of Jesus. Let healing come. Let healing flows, oh God. Let healing flows. We give you praise. We honor you. We use this time to pray for our medical practitioners. Father God, thank you for this awesome, beautiful people who are risking their own lives and heading into the eye of the storm in the hospitals, in the care homes to help those who have been afflicted, who have been struck down. Father God, we ask, oh God, that these ones you bring a covering around and you shield them, you touch them, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask and we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much. You are the one we depend on. And thank you because you are righteous to save us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Before we close every Sunday, when we meet for the rest of this year, we're going to be sharing communion together. And we already said, for those of you at home, get communion emblems so that we can share together. The reason we share communion is because it's not because it's a ritual. It's because we believe that God left with us an insurance, a warranty, that I am going just in case you have an harassment in the hand of the enemy. Always tell and remind the enemy that I paid the price in full. Jesus wants us to remind ourselves today. Rather than being afraid, let us say to ourselves, he paid in full for us to be set free, for us to be healed, for us to be delivered. Father God, we thank you for this communion. Thank you for the assurance we have in the name of Jesus. That whenever we call upon you, you can hear us and you can answer. Father, this morning, oh God, we come and hide under the cross of Calvary. We come, oh God, and we hide ourselves under the tree where Jesus died. We thank God that he did not die and left himself there. The Bible said on the third day he resurrected. This morning, oh God, we are here because Jesus is alive. And we ask of you, bless this communion. Bless this symbol, oh God, and this emblems, the bread and the wine, that as we take and share of it, let the power of Jehovah Rapha, the healer of his people, descend into our lives from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The stewards are going to just help us to pass the communion round. Please just take one for yourself. If you're at home, get your own communion emblems ready. And we're going to share it together as a family. And I was, like I said, every Sunday from now, we're going to be sharing it together. And we're not going to wait. We're not going to stop until we see God fulfill what he has promised. Bible call him a prayer answering God. Just take one. And if you're ready, let's just get the bread that stands for the body of Jesus. The Bible says that on the same night that Jesus was crucified, he took the bread and he broke it. He says to his disciples, he said, come, eat, this is my body that is broken for you. Broken for you so that you cannot and you should not in any way 
be held captives again. So today, this morning, on this day of the Lord, we declare that we are no captives to this virus. We set ourselves free because of the blood of Jesus. We decree that no hold of this virus will tie us down. In the name of, the Je in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you, O God. The Bible says we should receive this body of Jesus and take it as often as we would because we have been set free. So I charge you, I command you to receive the body of Jesus today in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Receive the body of Jesus. the same manner he took the cup he called it the New Testament this is not the blood of ram not the blood of goat so this is the blood that drained out of the side of Jesus there's potency in this blood to heal to deliver and to set free so today oh Lord we plead this blood we partake in it as those that have been saved and revived. And so we receive the body of Je the blood of Jesus in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Received the blood of Jesus. Let's just pray. Father, thank you for the hope that we have. If anything and everything is taken from us, hope is not taken from us. That is why we have come here today, because we have hope in Christ Jesus. We stand with that hope. Father God, and we look, O oh God, up to heaven, and we know help is coming into us even right now. We are delivered and set free. We are healed, O oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the deliverance that have been given to us. Thank you for the healing that has gone, O oh God, before us. This week shall be a week of grace. A week of healing. A week of joy. A week of success. A week for turn around, O oh God. From weak to strong. From poor to rich. Father God, we ask, O oh God, that you would deliver us and make us to arise once again and let our light shine. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the altar that we have. As we commune further on with you at this altar, we thank you for the deliverance of your people. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen.